Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today is December 27th, also known as the official release date of my first book, Make It Up, The Essential Guide to DIY Makeup and Skincare. I am beyond stoked. I, I'm i so, so, so excited that this book is officially out in the world for everybody to see. I know it has been sort of out in Australia and Europe for a little while longer than today, but today is the official release date and I wanted a day to be excited about, so here I am. I wanted to give you a little bit of a tour of the book. It was, isn't it gorgeous? Oh, my designer, Amanda, did such a good job. So, interesting fact, kick things off. This page, depending on which print of the book you have, might look a little different than this. Um, we already had to do a second print run. Uh, so. This page changed for the second print run, so if your page looks like this, you have one of the very, very first copies, so lucky you. So I divided the book up into a couple sections here. We have sort of the essential information, which is where sort of our ingredients, overview and glossary is, and shopping lists, and sort of best practices, and that sort of things. And we have some starter projects and concepts. So if you're a regular reader of my blog and you've made a lot of stuff, this chapter might not be, uh, might not be right up your alley, but if you're brand new to this, this is a great sort of starter intro thing going on, and then we have a chapter on skincare, and then we move into face makeup, eye makeup, and lip makeup. And then I have a list of a ton of stockists and suppliers at the back of the book, and then there's even more on my blog because that list just never stops growing. So, I, took, I did most of the photography on the inside of the book. Um, the lovely Michael Reale did the uh, did the model shots for the photo shoot that we did in Philadelphia, but uh, all of these, this is all, all my work, and I, I'm so proud of how much I've learned and how much my photography has improved throughout working on the book, and I'm also really thrilled to find that my habit of collecting tiny bottles really, really paid off. So score. <laughs> So we will skip through, I think, some of the basic, more basic projects in the shopping list. I already have the shopping lists available on my blog, and I will link to that. So if you are wondering what to buy and how much to buy, and, you know, sort of specific, like, should I buy micronized or non-micronized titanium dioxide? I have that all up on my blog with links to places to purchase everything all over the world. So that will absolutely get you set up, and it's probably a little bit easier than looking at the version in the book. So let's start with some face makeup. This is such a fun chapter for me. I'm pale enough that purchasing purchasing makeup, purchasing foundation for me is hard. I'm generally too pasty for, for the drugstore or for Sephora to really accommodate particularly well. My skin tone also changes enough during the year that I'm not a huge fan of repurchasing my foundation every three months because I'm now too pale or too tan for the color that I previously purchased. So now you can make your own foundation and you can reblend it whenever you want. Whenever you get a tan, you can continually reblend, and you never have to worry about dropping sixty to ninety dollars every three months every time your skin tone changes. So I worked with a bunch of women with a bunch of different skin tones to try to make sure that I really offered you starting blends for a wide variety of skin tones. So from the very fair, my friend Courtney, the only person I've ever met who doesn't need any brown <laughs> in her foundation, all the way to my friend Adora, who actually has a little bit of blue ultramarine in her foundation. So I've given you a ton of great places to start and then an entire page of tips on color blending. So if you are struggling with that, hopefully you, you know you, there's tons of guidance there. And also the ingredients are inexpensive. So just like have fun, play, take notes, and you can make an absolute rainbow of foundations. And then something I love about this book and the way that I've done this differently than I have on my blog is that you start with that powder and then you can transform that powder into a ton of different things without having to rematch your complexion. So you only have to do that once, which is amazing. So you know that your concealer is gonna be exactly the same color as your foundation because it's made from your foundation. So sweet. And then we move on to powder base and cream bases for blush, bronzers, and highlighters. So I've provided a recipe for a powder base and a recipe for a cream base. And so you make that base and then you add different color blends to it to turn that base into blush or into bronzer or into highlighter. And then of course you can customize it in a million different ways. Like remember to take notes so that you can recreate it because it'd be heartbroken if you lose your favorites. But that's awesome. And I love this spread here with the beautiful Ina. She is 
one of our models and just oh, so stunning and mm, yeah so she's wearing some of the bronzers from the book and of course foundations and everything it looks absolutely gorgeous and then we have an anti shine setting powder of course and yours truly and then we're into eye makeup so the eye makeup chapter was fun and challenging and terrifying and this primer here was like the last recipe of the book I figured out, and I kid you not, like four days before my manuscript was due. I was testing eye primer like a crazy person throughout the entire duration of this book, and I am thrilled to announce that I came up with something that really works and is really easy to make. I actually came up with two things that work, so woohoo! <laughs> so I know a lot of you have asked for primer recipes. It's in the book. Then we move on to eyeshadow. Eyeshadow works, again, very much like the the powdered blushes and things. We make an eyeshadow base and we make a bunch of it. And then you just take two teaspoons of it and then you can create all kinds of different eyeshadows with the different color blends that I have here. And of course you can create your own and I've provided guidelines so you can create your own. So eyeliner, oh my goodness. This was, eh, this was another, this was a lot of work <laughs> to do to come up with some eyeliner. So the creamy eyeliner is what you would be sort of familiar with as being eyeliner in a pencil. So I made it in pots because filling, trying to buy and fill empty pencils is way more trouble and mess than it's worth. So just put it in a pot and apply it with a fine tip brush. And you can see me do that in quite a few of the sort of makeup demonstration tutorials that I've done for this book. And you can make all kinds of beautiful colors and then of course you can invent your own. And then there's a gel eyeliner and this stuff is so cool. So neat, yeah, you can, this stuff wears really, really well, even without primer, which I think is basically magic. And you can make them in a ton of different colors. They're super easy to make. You're basically going to make a gel base, portion out a small amount of it, and then add your pigments and some of your adhesion boosters to that, whisk it all together, and voila. And so it's like a water activated kind of gel eyeliner. So you get your brush wet, and then you can work it up and paint it on, and you can work up your own colors, and it's, it's very cool. I think you'll like it. And then we have mascara. Totally new recipe from that's on the blog. Doesn't use any weird Australian clays. It gets its color from, you know, iron oxide, so it's not a concern. Um, yeah, I should reiterate that with the mascara and the gel eyeliner, these are things that go around your eyes and have water in them. So you gotta use a preservative and don't keep them forever. Like chuck them out after three months and make more. It's not hard, it's inexpensive. Eye infections suck, just don't tempt fate. Keep everything as clean as possible when you're making them include a real broad spectrum preservative. So I'm recommending Liquid Germal Plus. Really please don't use like a Nata Press or any kind of more like natural preservative for this. Use something that works. Eye infections are natural too. No bueno. So purge often, make clean, use preservative, use common sense. Okay. And then we have a brow wax. So again, this is like a base with a ton of different color blends so that you can have, um, you know, whatever works for your particular complexion all the way through from fair to darkest. Uh, and I've actually, I made most of them and put them in a little pouring paint pan from TKB. So I just sort of have all of them on hand all the time. And I tend to play with like three different ones depending on where my complexion's at and the look that I want. And then the last chapter, lip makeup. So we start with tinted lip balms, which uh, I've got a vegan and a beeswax base for that so that you can choose. Um, and then a bunch of different color blends. And then we do stray into a little bit of alkanet tinted as well. We only use the alkanet for this one recipe in the book and I just included it because I thought it would be fun to have a little bit of, oh, hey, this color comes from herbs. But uh, if you don't wanna make this one recipe, don't bother buying the alkanet root. Uh, and we have some lip scrubs. These are pretty similar to ones on my blog already, so they might look familiar. And then we move into lip gloss territory. And again, there is a beeswax lip gloss base and a vegan lip gloss base. So if you're vegan, you can choose a vegan. And if you are not, you can choose whatever you have the ingredients for. And then some different color blends. And of course, a guide on how to invent your own, because that's the fun part. Lip stain. This is one recipe that really didn't change much from what appears on the blog, because it's amazing. The makeup artist for the book absolutely loved this lip stain. She was so, so, so smitten with it and couldn't get enough of it. So. Lip stain is the bomb. And that's, that's the only recipe for the book where you, like, you absolutely have to have carmine. Uh, pretty much everywhere else in the book that calls for carmine, you can use FDNC red number seven if you are vegan or if you think carmine is gross or if you just don't want to pay for it because it can be kind of pricey, especially um, based on sort of what country that you live in. I know it's a lot cheaper in the States than it is in Canada and sort of so on and so forth. So yeah. And then lipstick. Again, there's two bases. There is a long wear lipstick base and there is a creamy vegan base. So choose your base 
and choose your lipstick blends. And I, I love these little these little color swatches that are just little smudges that I did um, with like a knife and took pictures of them. And then Amanda popped them in there and they look great. And yeah. And I worked again with lots of different women to come up with a wide variety of colors. So this color, Adore here, my, it's named for my friend Adora, who is a makeup artist who just, oh my gosh, she just like absolutely fell in love with this, this lipstick. I don't think I've ever seen her so excited. So I am um, proud of that blend. And then we move into lip paint. So a lot of you have asked me for sort of like a matte liquid lipstick. And this is, this is kind of it. So it's like a, it's not full on liquid. It's pretty pasty, but what's amazing about it is the wear time. Like, oh my heavens, you, you put some of this on. The color, as you can see, is just like amazing. And it like, once it sets, it's matte, it stays like you wouldn't believe. You can put lip balm on over top of it and lip gloss on over top of it without it peeling off, which I've heard is a problem with a lot of like more matte lipsticks and liquid lipsticks. And it just stays forever. I wore this to a pop crawl. I've worn this to like whiskey tastings and you don't leave a lip print on a single glass and your lips look amazing for hours. So this stuff is amazing. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. That's my book. There's room at the back for you to make notes. So remember to take notes. Don't ever lose your favorite color formulations. And then there's a picture of me at the back that doesn't really look like me. This looks like my more glamorous older sister who, you know, taught me how to wear makeup. But it is me. Magic of makeup. Yeah. Anyhow, this is my book. I am very proud of it. I hope you love it. I hope you make all kinds of things that you can't get enough of and are super, super proud of. And if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to get in touch. I can't wait to hear what you think of this. I can't wait to see the things that you create. Please share your creations with me on my Facebook page or on, you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter. You can email me. Yeah. I hope you fall in love with making your own makeup. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe. Check me out on you know Instagram and Twitter at Marie Rayma. And yeah. Have fun making makeup.